Good morning. Welcome to the second day of our celebration of the Festival of the Muses, presented by Harvard University Center for Hellenic Studies, in collaboration with the Isadora Duncan International Institute, the Ecumenical Delphic Union, and the Committee for the Reinstatement of the Delphic Games. I am Zoe Lafis, and I join you as representative of the Center for Hellenic Studies, where I serve as executive director, working together with our faculty director, Professor Greg Naj, our senior fellows, Laura Slatkin and Richard Martin, and our colleagues, Lana Coley, Ali Marbury, Leah Henhart, and Noel Spencer, among others. We welcome your thoughts and comments about the festival and look forward to hearing from you via email at muses at chs.harvard.edu. We start our day with a wonderful friend who embodies creative, collaborative, and mentoring spirit through her work with Word Dance Theater, of which she is founder and artistic director. Cynthia Word was born and raised in Abilene, Texas. She has a Bachelor of Science from the University of Texas, Austin, but began her modern dance training at the University of Illinois. She later received her Master in Fine Arts from the George Washington University where she served on the teaching faculty. Based in Washington, D.C., through her work with Word Dance Theater, Cynthia Word integrates the talents of dancers, playwrights, actors, musicians, multimedia and production artists, and offers Isadora Duncan technique classes, as well as master classes, lectures, demonstrations, and workshops for educational institutions. Cynthia Ward creates award-winning Isadora Duncan-based dance theater productions, blending compelling story, live music, contemporary choreography, and the dances of Isadora Duncan to create theatrical productions that are powerfully engaging to audiences. Her most recent creation, Move, Women's Rights from Isadora Duncan to Now, premiered at the John F. Kennedy Center on March 4, 2020. Myriad was premiered at the Center for Hellenic Studies on September 16, 2017. Please welcome our dear friend, Cynthia Word. Thank you, Zoe, and good morning, everyone. It's great to be here on this beautiful Saturday morning after such a rich day yesterday, and I'm so grateful to everyone who um, contributed to this Garden of Muses. And I'm excited to add my little seed. So I think we're ready to begin the uh, PowerPoint presentation. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the watery world of Nereid, the making of a dance. As Zoe told you, my name is Cynthia Word. I am the director of Word Dance Theater and the choreographer of Nereid. Nereid is a dance study inspired by the drawings and paintings of Ann Davies. I became involved with this project through an invitation by Zoe Lafis from the Center for Hellenic Studies. And in this um, presentation, you will see uh, some of the drawings and paintings of Ann Davy. You'll see and learn about the dance technique, a little bit about the dance technique of Isadora Duncan, the music of Vasilis Sabropoulos. We'll talk a little bit about the, the costuming of the choices of the costuming. We'll compare images of the dance as well against images of the paintings. We will look at some of the choreographic motifs of the dance so you can watch for those. And then we will actually see the performance of the dance. And if there's time, we will have a short discussion at the end of the presentation. In April of 2017, Zoe Lafis approached me about providing a dance for the closing celebration of the artist Ann Davies exhibit from the depths of the salt sea, a visual exploration of the historical and imaginative idea of the Nereids. I began researching the Nereids in Greek literature and I found that they were water nymphs 
associated with the Aegean Sea. They are daughters of the sea god Nereus and the river nymph Doris. Like water, they are shapeshifters, sometimes manifesting as beautiful women, sometimes animals, especially dolphins. The dolphin is their symbol, and they are often shown riding dolphins across the sea. Christians considered the Nereids she-devils. On the other hand, Davy, as a contemporary artist, has imagined the Nereids as real but enigmatic women who inhabit an inaccessible world. Immune from the hazards and complications the ocean poses to human beings, they can freely move in and out of the deep as three-dimensional complex individuals separate from us because they occupy a realm foreign to terrestrial beings, but still recognizably human in appearance. I know that many of you already know about Isadora Duncan and her great work, but there are some that may not. And so I'd like to take a moment to share a short um, amount of biographical information about Isadora and particularly about her abiding love and uh, devotion to the Hellenic Greek culture. Isadora Duncan was born in San Francisco in 1877. In her autobiography, My Life, she said, I was born by the sea and I have noticed that all great events of my life have taken place by the sea. When Isadora was growing up, there were three dominant dance forms in America, ballet, ballroom, and burlesque. She was exposed to ballet as a young woman, but ultimately she didn't identify with any of these art forms. And she determined to create a new system of movement based upon nature, especially as the Greeks expressed it in their literature, art, and mythology. The Greek statuary and vases reinforced what Isidore already believed in, the dignity and beauty of the human body, the body as the temple of the spirit. She opposed the entrapment of the female body by the Victorian fashions of her time. She began performing barefoot in Grecian inspired silken tunics, which both covered and revealed her body. In fact, she was so inspired by Greece that in 1903, she bought land outside of Athens. Her brother Raymond attempted to build a house where the Duncan clan could live and bring forth a school of art and life for all children. Ultimately, the plan was unsuccessful and Isadora departed Greece to continue performing in Europe. Her great dream was to create a school in which children were given a free liberal arts education inclusive of dance. In the course of her life, she established schools in Germany, France, and Russia. From the German school came six students who stayed with Isadora all of her life. They were called the Isadorables. After her death in 1927, three of the Isadorables, Anna, Irma, and Maria Teresa, moved to New York City. They created Duncan schools to perpetuate Isadora's legacy. The first generation of American Duncans from those schools were, among others, Lillian Rosenberg, Julia Levine, Hortense Kulras, Sylvia Goal, and our beloved Rishani. These first generation Duncans and their students founded schools and dance companies, continuing the Duncan legacy in America. Others of the original Isadoras, Isadorables did the same in Europe. Today, the Duncan legacy is alive throughout the world, perpetuated by an ever-growing number of students 
Isadora is considered the mother of modern dance. Nereids exist in water, not just any water, not creeks or lakes or streams, but in the seas, especially the Aegean Sea. We cannot think of the sea without thinking of and sensing the waves, the rise and the fall of water in forever undulating lines. When we imagine the Nereid in their watery home, we can feel the gentle undulations and tessellations of their bodies in the deep sea. So implicit is the wave to the being of the Nereid that the letter N, when the points are softened, becomes an ideogram of a wave, as does the undulating path of the dolphin, her token animal. How delightful that the Duncan technique is the perfect dance training for embodying the Nereids. Duncan based her technique on the wave of energy that moves through the human body based on the inhaling and exhaling of breath. We inhale rising and expanding. We exhale sinking and narrowing thus creating a wave of breath initiating from the lungs in the area of the solar plexus into and throughout the body. My dear friends, place your hands on your solar plexus at the V of your rib cage. Now breathe in deeply. Feel your body expand and rise. And now slowly breathe out and feel the sinking and narrowing. From the solar plexus, the dancer moves into space propelled by the waves of the breath, much as the Nereids move through water propelled by the waves. There is even a particular type of Duncan technique called Murr work. In these studies, the dancer is laying down as she inhales she expands and rises upwards from the solar plexus, allowing the wave of inhalation to ripple all the way out to her fingers and her toes. And on the exhale, she condenses and sinks, returning to a state of release into gravity, only to begin again on the next breath. The purpose of the Murr work is to increase the oceanic quality of the dancer's body, mind, and spirit. Anne Davies' work negotiates the space between representation and abstraction. Familiar becomes unfamiliar. Figures are fragmented and abstracted. Water breaks up light, obscuring the body. I love the image of the body as both human and water, almost as if the human were in metamorphosis. Davy photographed her daughter underwater in a swimming pool. The water created distortions and abstractions of her daughter's body, which she explored and amplified in her paintings and her drawings. Since I could not work with the dancers in a swimming pool, I couldn't use water to abstract the dancers' bodies. We experimented with the traditional Duncan tunics to create some abstraction of the body, akin to how Davy used water. In the first image, you see silk as water rings with a simple abstraction of the arms. In the second image, the middle image, you see Davy's representation of Glauk, a one of the Nereids. And in the third frame, you see us using, and I say us, I mean the dancers, Jennifer Golden, 
Ingrid Zimmer and myself, Cynthia Word, you see us using silks as capes, thus adding more watery volume around the body. And I might say that if I were remounting this dance, I would use even more silk, such that the body is barely seen and is more a whirl of watery fabric. I don't usually start my choreographic process with music. I actually usually start with some kind of concept or exciting idea. However, the timeline for this project was short, only one month. So I began listening to different compositions and I especially wanted to tie in the composer to tie into the Greek culture. I recalled an album that I loved called Chants, Hymns and Dances by Vasilis Sabropoulos. Sabropoulos is a Greek pianist, conductor, and composer. Of that album, I chose Toi, Marcel Opre for the music of Nereid, composed by Sabropoulos and inspired by ancient Byzantine hymns. To me, it sounded lyrical and mysterious in keeping with Davy's representation of the Nereids. Additionally, I liked that Sabropoulos had adopted the music of G.I. Gurdjieff, a mystic, philosopher, and spiritual teacher who was a contemporary of Isadora Duncan's and traveled in the same social circles. I wanted the dance to leave the audience feeling they had journeyed to a watery world and then returned to land. To accomplish this from a movement standpoint, I used the wave pattern both within the dancers' bodies and spatially. When you see the dance, look for the breath that motivates the dancers' movements. Also, the wave image is inscribed in the space in which the dance is being performed. For example, you may see the dancers lifting one another, which creates the rising and falling like waves. Also notice the S-shaped path, which we Duncans call a serpentine path, which one dancer takes to journey to the surface of the sea. After listening to the music many times, a story began to emerge in my imagination. At the beginning is a section of play. The Nereids are happy in their underwater home. In this section, we see circle dances, games of chase, shooting backwards, a movement that we created and we called it the squid, and weight sharing. The final choreography of this play section came from hours in the studio with the dancers improvising with games and movements. In the next section, one of the Nereids becomes aware of a human calling her from the sea, from beyond the sea. She attempts to go to him, but her sisters hold her back. Yet she determines to make the unknown journey through the sea to the vortex that will draw her upward to the surface of the water. The serpentine path of the dancer becomes a running circle ending in the vortex that draws her upward to the surface. She finds the human and they dance together, but she cannot live on land and calls the human to follow her back to the depths of the salt sea. The Nereids encircle the human and draw him down to their watery realm. Thank you for joining me in this presentation. I hoped it provided some insight into my choreographic process and inspiration for you to follow the muses of your own choreographic or your own creative process, whatever that may be. I will also encourage you to visit the Word Dance Theater's contribution to the Garden of the Muses, where we perform Duncan's famous revolutionary etude as excerpted from our recent production, Move, Women's Rights from Isadora Duncan to now. And now, please enjoy Nereid, choreographed by Cynthia Word, performed by Jennifer Golden, Cynthia Word, 
and Ingrid Zimmer.
Dear Cynthia, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you very much for this beautiful, leading us to this beautiful journey um, of your process and uh, the results. And thank you for sharing this with the friends who are joining us today at the festival. Um, I, I must say that, um, and just, uh, we may have questions from, uh, from our friends and our audience, but, just, but I, just to say, I am just so moved. You brought me to the ocean this morning and, and gave us this wonderful aura and avra, I would say, from, from the sea through this amazing expressive work. Um, I have an immediate question almost, and this is coming again from our work on the center. I just feel so honored and, and so great. It's really just, it's been a gift. Your work and the development of this piece of Nereids has been a gift to, um, um, to our environment here at the Center for Hellenic Studies. Uh, 2017, it feels like today, you know, it just, you just brought it back. Um, it was so wonderful because here, like a beautiful muse or our point of inspiration here in our medium was the catalyst. The catalyst for that was Anne Davy and her work. And uh, it, it seems, it's a, I think even this constraints, she's not here among us like today, but her work is informing our conversation today. Yes. And this is just so powerful, the, the, the power of material culture that can kind of transcend. So it, it, these are little messages that we can send through our, through our work, through our artistic work and material culture work. Yes, and you know, Zoe, I wonder if you recall that um, I brought my adult dance class over to the center and we uh, improvised with um, Anne's paintings. Do you remember that? I do. So yes. It's yes. not only living in my body, but also in the the dancers who joined me that day. And I think you were one of them. Um, at the center, we we danced in front of the paintings. We danced out in the beautiful courtyard that you saw in the video. Yes. You know, I only wish there was some way that a dance could hang up on a wall the way the painting could, but of course, then it wouldn't be a dance. So really, I don't wish that. Yes. We are dealing with a very ephemeral, beautiful, prayerful art form that doesn't exist except through the bodies yes. of the people who have experienced it. Yes. Cynthia, this is why it is just so beautiful. This is a practice. This is a a regular practice. It, it comes with breathing, as you mentioned. And I would like to, to add just part of my experience through that. And I hope that my fellow students um, and dancers and practitioners, let's say, uh, sort of, I would love them to weigh in perhaps in conversation as we continue our conversation. But I just like to add, I feel like because of this technique, the Isadora Duncan technique, it, it, there is, we tap into so much into our natural movement. And with a technique, we kind of enhance that movement. There is this, this uh, it, it allows us this capacity to actually and come into this dance and into set of movement um, in a very natural way. So just to say as a student, and so I see this beautiful piece and let me just point out, this was an, a, a performance by three, three performers, Ingrid, Jennifer, and you, Cynthia. Uh, but he, and you mentioned that a, a, re, a production of it in its full, in, in, in a fullness, in a more full version of it. I mean, this is, these are three Nereids performing, uh, but the Nereids are 50. And yes. it, Anne Davis's work also is that. I mean, we had a representation of about, I don't know, 20 of the 50. I, I, now I'm not being accurate, but, but no, a, a grouping, out of the, the, the full range of, of, the, of the myth, you know, the references to the myth, but just to say in a full production, 50 dancers coming together into this natural movement that, that feels like ocean, you know, that, that gives you that sense with that much silk to enhance them. Yes. Uh, um, it can, it is, is this kind of coming together of a beautiful um, tableau and, and, and a beautiful space. And this is the dream that, 
I know is your dream uh, that... Can you imagine 30, 40, 50 bodies awash in their silk, their blues and greens and purples and all the colors of water in its various moods moving in their wave together, how beautiful and powerful that would be. And to that amazing, amazing sound of Mr. Tabropoulos. Tab and wouldn't it be great to do it live to that music? <laughs> That's a dream, but wow, I can dream. Yes. So this is our dream for today and our little wish. We send it. Yes. Uh, yes. We'll send it out to the universe. Yes, yes, indeed, indeed, dear Cynthia. Um, let's see, I just wanted to check and see how we are doing on, on, on time and, and we have any questions, any further questions, just uh, uh, bear with me. I lost sense of time. I've been swimming in the ocean. Uh, I know, we're over time. Oh, yes, yes. So dear Lana, dear Ali, Please give us, let me just see, just a little guidance. But Cynthia, this is a wonderful, um, just while we get to this, a little bit pointers and maybe a few more um, uh, minutes. Um, um, can you tell us a little bit more? This is a wish, we send it, maybe we'll, uh, and we continue to work towards it. And, you, and, uh, and I, I hope, I, just to say again, introducing you, with Anne David was, I, I felt it was like, I, I it, to me, it was the best thing I could do, you know, just like mm -hmm. then you found the synergy and the dialogue between you and, and the idea of this, this, this collaborative um, um, element um, of, of your medium and, and the work you work is beautiful. And so you can give us a few words about that and perhaps about any after the move, the, the most recent production, maybe a few words about your experience with that. Yes. What you have in store. So. Yes, you know, um, I thrive on co uh, collaboration and I thrive on the Greek concept of theater, the blending of song and spoken word, music, dance, and um, powerful storytelling all as woven together. And so regarding Anne, uh, it would be a dream for me. We, we had hardly any communication, so I would have loved that. It would be a dream for me to perform these works um, in the, surrounded by her, her, her paintings and to even draw more inspiration. It would alter the way I would, if I were to reset the work, I would probably shift it um, around more around her work. Then in regard to move, you know, that to say briefly, that was just a powerful collaboration between myself representing Isidore Duncan and Duncan's work here alive in contemporary in America, in Carlos Rodriguez uh, as my music director who brought in the three opera singers. Um, and then uh, Jennifer, Jenny McConnell Frederick, who is the director of Rorschach Theater, and she, she was the dramaturg, she was the director of theater for move. So here again, it was an, a, a Greek, in a sense of the, in, in honoring the Greek theater, it was a sense of Greek theater carried forward into questions of, of uh, agency in terms of our own freedom now. So it's so strange that we did that in March and we've been creating it for two years prior to that. And now I see these protests in the street in slightly different variation, but this question of human rights, which Isadora was so powerfully engaged in, especially towards the end of her life, social justice. Indeed. Cynthia, thank you very much for continuing this very valuable, this valuable work, this valuable work. And um, um, so I, I wish you well. I look forward to being part of it as I can. And, and to invite all our friends and um, uh, that uh, would like to participate in this conversation and the process to do so. Um, thank yes, thank you again for being thank with you us. Thank you, you're integral to it all. Thank you. Uh, 
Oh, it's, it's, it's just truly a pleasure and honor and a joy, truly a joy, Cynthia. We will conclude for today. We will conclude, but maybe I just will remind everyone who would like, um, you have thoughts, comments, and ideas and wishes, please write to us, muses at chs.harvard.edu, more information on our website, and certainly visit our garden and take a look at MOVE. Um, yes. Um, which is just um, a beautiful, uh, just then let us know what you think. MOVE Women's Rights from Isadora Duncan to now. Thank you again. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you so much. Wonderful day, everyone. Continuation of the day. Yes. Power. Beauty and power. Good day.